If the current biosimilars should fail uh, to actually uh, lead to cost reduction in the healthcare system, um, I think uh, it will be interesting what is going to happen because uh, uh, for a manufacturer um, it is necessary um, to get uh, the money out of uh, the development of such a drug um, uh, afterwards and uh, if this is not the case you will need to reconsider. I am skeptical that this is going to happen. Uh, I am uh, very optimistic actually that uh, the usage of biosimilars will lead to um, cost reductions and um, the money being saved this way can then be used uh, to new innovative um, uh, products which will come to the market and are being developed currently. What happens with cost? And I think that that's one of the issues that's come up a lot. You know, with a 15% savings, is it worth it? You know, I mean, does that make a big difference to us? Does it need to be 30%? Does it need to be 70%? probably in some countries to really make an impact on how uh, accessible drugs are to the population, it needs to be a 70% reduction. But I think that the competition between the different biosimilars that are out there will allow for substantial pricing differentials. So if you know, there's competition and they say, if you say you're gonna only use our drug, we're gonna give it to you at a 40% discount, that kind of competition can really allow uh, much greater uh, cost savings. So uh, I think that we will see cost savings. I don't really see that the market will collapse because we didn't see any cost savings. Now, if my predictions are wrong and you know nobody uses biosimilars, then of course that whole area will collapse. But I think that in the general sort of approach of pharmaceuticals and cancer care, the competition has been a really important part of drug development. Um, and it's really benefited our patients. So hopefully that's still the case. There's the rheumatologic diseases. You can basically group these into rheumatologic diseases and cancer. And I think that, you know, we're going to be really, as agents go off patent, we're gonna be replacing those agents largely with biosimilars or the reference biologic products are going to just match the pricing of the biosimilars. So we're gonna see that shift over time. But we keep entering new biologics into the area, right? We've just got immunotherapy. We had new antibodies to HER2 target, you know, that are HER2 targeted. Uh, we have a lot of other agents that target different biologic pathways. So, you know, we're always going to have agents that are starting the patent process and then agents that are coming to the end of their patent life. So this is going to be an ongoing change where we see, you know, different options available around the world in terms of the cost of agents and better access as agents reach the end of their patent and then the newer agents starting that whole process again. I believe that in rheumatology or gastroenterology as well as in oncology, the progress uh, being made in the development of biosimilars will lead to um, uh, quality care for these patients. Um, one could imagine that, uh, for example, in um, uh, uh, Crohn's disease um, or, or ulcerative colitis, um, the uh, use of um, these monoclonal antibodies um, will, due to the reduced costs, maybe um, lead uh, to an earlier use of these drugs throughout the course um, of the disease. However, this is speculative and I uh, think here the um, uh, clinical trials necessary need to be performed before one can um, uh, consider this uh, coming true, but I think this is an option and um, in countries uh, where there is not such a high budget in healthcare, um, I think um, in all three areas um, the availability will lead to better, better treatment results uh, due to more um, usage of these drugs. I think that uh, the whole area of biosimilars is a nice example of the interplay between our regulatory bodies, uh, pharmaceutical companies, and patient access and drug competition, you know, basically competition improving patient access. 
it's interesting because you know overall I think there's a sort of a feeling against some um, regulations and regulatory bodies and how they sort of control different um, ways of using agents but I uh, and I think that that in the US we've largely believed that that's a way to protect patient safety uh, but now what we're seeing is the regulatory agencies also helping to create a competitive environment that will improve access and reduce costs and free up some of that uh, money for additional development of new agents and access to novel agents. So to me, it's really been a fascinating time to see that uh, go into play, to see our first approvals of therapeutic biosimilars in the US and Europe. Um, and to hope that what that will lead to, and I think we've seen that to some degree already in India, but hopefully we'll see it around the world, uh, that what this will do in the long term is to provide patients who can't afford access to life-saving drugs access because of the competition of biosimilars. So I think that uh, it's a really big step and important progress. Uh, even though our patients in the United States have access to biologic agents, this can only move uh, our ability to care for our patients uh, better uh, forward in a positive way.